Hey everyone, welcome back. Another season of Expanding the Zone. Here's show 51. I'm Shane Holmes here with my brother, Mac Holmes, as, as always. And Matt, excited to get a, another season underway. As always, uh, shout out to Dr. Chris Good there, Good Health Chiropractic Center, and uh, for all his support and us uh, putting the leadership podcast out there and, and uh, covering some high school sports there. Um, as I'll do throughout the year, obviously in our summer season, that's when our heaviest podcasting takes place, a lot of leadership and so forth. And first of all, how, how's the, how's the, uh, school year end up? How's summer going for you, Matt? Yeah. You know, it's nice to get into summertime a little bit. Things slow down a little. I mean, as you know, Shane, and when you're a school administrator, it never completely you know, shuts off, but it, but it slows down a little, get a little more family time, uh, try to honestly some of the stuff we're talking about uh, tonight and throughout this 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 summer season uh of expanding the zone some of that stuff honestly applies to what you and i go through on a daily basis now right kind of recharging our batteries and looking ahead to, to what we need to, to 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 improve on going into next year well it really does and i'm excited about tonight's show as we talk about where are your feet uh i think Thanks for everybody watching out there on YouTube, listening throughout the podcast. You can, again, see us on our YouTube channel or on our podcast uh, app uh, out there, wherever you get your podcasts. We're out there expanding the zone. And Matt, when we talk about where are your feet, it's kind of a saying that uh, you'll hear a lot of people talk about. And and it's talking about living more now, not necessarily worrying about so much what's happened in the past, not worrying so much what's going on in the future. And, And I guess... When I hear that, it's 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 in no way saying not to learn from the past. It's it's no way saying not to uh, be aware of and plan for your future. I think it's just trying to remind uh, people of all ages, leaders of all things, uh, to kind of to focus in on what you're doing right at this point and making sure you're present and, and making sure that you're doing the very very best and and, and living to your potential. What what? I guess that's a good place to start right there. You've been doing leadership of all kinds for so long. When you hear where are your feet and you hear things like live now um, and not dwelling on past or, 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 or begging the future here quicker than possible, what what say you in terms of, of just your first response to this topic? Well, I, I think it's like most things, you know, is I, I think sometimes we live like in a, in a really black and white time where it's like, you know, if 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 you believe one thing then 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 you have to believe that wholeheartedly and you can't um you can't uh you know meet in the middle on certain things i don't i i've always felt like in this in this subject of live present right like you're talking about right now um and while also being able to plan for the future learn from your past i don't think it has to be exclusive what i mean by that i i don't think well i you know uh, live present. That's all I could do, right? I, I can't think about anything that's ever happened to me. I can't think about anything that lies ahead. I just have to live right now in the moment. Well, we know that's not realistic, you know, to to do that exclusively. Otherwise, we'd all go out, cancel our life insurance, and and you know, withdraw our retirement and go have fun and live in the moment, right? I mean, there's. I think we what we mean by at least what I think we mean, Shane, by be you kind of be where your feet are at the, at the time is if you are engaged in something give it your full attention right give it 100% don't become distracted by by you know a dozen other things going on um i mean i don't know about you but this happens in the workplace for me a lot especially this year you know being an assistant principal in two buildings being an athletic director there are times where you need to be two places at once and you can't be, I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's, you know, you can't be two places at once, right. There's times you need to be. And I think what I made a commitment to myself and, and to my job is if I'm dealing with something at the middle school and something comes up at the high school, then, well, that's going to have to wait for a minute. I got to deal with what I'm dealing with, right. You got to be where your feet are. That's what you're talking about with the title of the show and and be all in in that moment um i think as we get into some discussions tonight shane i think we've got some some good discussion topics and i think we'll expand a little bit on what i mean by being able to do be be able to be present while also um planning for the future learning from the past there's still ways to do that for sure 
Do, do you think there's a little bit, and I, I have such a long checklist to get on through, but I, I think this opening is, is so powerful to make sure that we're just getting kind of people as, as they <laughs> listen along and, and they talk along with us, kind of, kind of applying this to themselves. Do, do, do you think it's a little bit of ensuring quality when um, maybe the quantity is not available? I, like I know a lot of times, Leaders are, are busy, and it's it's the uh, – we'll, we'll take athletic director, for example. There's a lot of hours. There's a lot of evening hours. There's a lot of different things. There's a lot of time away from home. There's a lot of coaching. Even when you're not there, you feel like it, it, it owns right. your mind. We've all been there. Trying to separate that in terms of having that – those quality moments. Maybe it's with family. Maybe it's with with yourself. Maybe it's to have exercise time. Maybe it's to, to go do that one extra thing that clears your mind. Do, do you think there's a little bit of a quality uh, factor that's involved in this particular thing, even when quantity is not available? Well, I, yeah, I th- and I think a lot of what you're talking about there is is well, there's a few things, but time management comes to mind, right? And 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 kind of being able to plan for those mo like what you know, here's what I need to accomplish today, and when I'm when I'm involved, like you mentioned, exercise or time with your family or whatever you, you are priorities in your life, right? you when you're doing those things being all in at that time like just be right there like as a coach it's really difficult as you know to when you know you've you've had a tough loss or or you got a game coming up the next day it's it's kind of hard to to spend those that time with your kids and not be thinking about something else and and I think that's what we're talking about here, right? Just be in that moment and be locked in on what you're doing, not only for that professional personal life balance, but actually even in the our professional lives. You know, being whatever we're whatever we're really locked in on at that time. Because what happens if you're not careful? It's like the old saying: you become a jack of all trades, master of none, right? If you if you're not if you if you can't focus in on where you're at at the moment, what you're doing at that moment, you're just sort of average at everything, you know, mm-hmm. instead of being really good at what you're doing right then and there. And I think that's what, that's what we're, I think that's what you mean when you say quality. Absolutely. You know, and people have listened to our first uh, 50 shows out through, throughout our, our, our what, what's it been now, two, three seasons together on expanding the zone. It, we, we always try to relate it to, to uh, major things in leadership or in sports world throughout, you know, current, current events. And obviously the NBA finals just finishing up uh, with the Denver Nuggets. And I really enjoyed the NBA finals this year because I wasn't really rooting for a particular team. I was just a fan of basketball and, uh, you know, you love the, the the culture and the chemistry and the toughness of the Miami Heat. You love the the just the the way Denver plays. Um, you love the Joker in, in terms of his um, his overall skill set and so forth. And you know, Jamal Murray. You and I have been longtime Kentucky basketball fans, so he's always been one you kind of keep an eye on. And his journey's been crazy when you think of his injury past and. Uh, what he's come through to get back to this level. And and he was talking about this very thing, just staying present, stay where your feet are at. And, you know, be it winning game one or losing game two, not overreacting to either or. And, you know, everything we're talking about here in the opening seems easy, right? You know, you, you say it and you live it. Well, it's not always that easy. And it, it's one of those things that's so easy for your mind to drift back to, man, I wish I would have done this better. I messed this up. And I'll never get this back. I'll never get this chance back. And then at the same time, you're looking ahead, man, if I do this and we just accomplish this and this and this, and I get to do this and you can really lose sight of what you're doing right here in the moment. Um, that, that's just something that really hit me during the NBA finals. And I think, I think there's a great leadership thing in terms of how the coaches and how the leaders of the Denver Nuggets talked about that game by game in terms of their ultimate goal of winning four before the heat win four right and it's, right. it's a situation where um that was just that really stuck with me what what what's been what's been your experience in terms of trying to stay in that present moment when you've had so much trouble letting something go in the past um or or looking ahead to the future and i'm not even talking necessarily about maybe winning and losing this could even be like um you know you obviously just made a huge career change I'm sure there's, there's times where you look back and dag on man, you really miss Vinton County and you, you, you care about Vinton County. I know this year you, you, 
you kept in close contact with Benton County. You, you cared about their success. You wanted to see them do well. But at the same time, you were presently moving forward and you were focused in on a new group of kids and a new challenge. Just kind of take us through that in terms of how balancing all that. It sounds easy, but it's really not. Yeah, I think I I think you know your 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 past experiences are there. You know, it's not like you can just erase them from your memory. So I think what happens is a lot of times it's sort of how you deal with that or how you learn from that or or how you move on from that or whatever however you want to say it. I think you know you'll you'll hear stories about people like um uh, you know like a golfer, like Tiger Woods, for instance, I remember when I was reading a book by Hank Haney about his years with Tiger Woods, he talked about how, you know, Tiger Woods would, would, would hit a bad shot. He'd react to it. Sometimes the fans would be like, Oh, he got a little angry there. He cussed or he slammed a club or something. But, but he said, Tiger was the best at just letting it go right after that. Like by the time Tiger got to his next shot, he literally had just put everything else out of his mind and it was about the next shot. It was always about the very next shot. Right. And I think as coaches, what do we always tell our kids? You know, it's the next play. It's the next play. And it, that doesn't mean that we won't go back and watch film and learn from mistakes and say, why did we do this? Or how can, you know, I mean, what were we thinking here? Right. I think learning from the past is important, but I think not letting it eat you up, uh, you know, when you're talking about maybe past failures, for sure, um, do those things sort of stick with you as motivation or do they stick with you as fear? You know, like, here we mm. go again. And I, and I think those I think that's probably, you know, we'll talk about the future a little bit, too, and how you deal with that. But when you're dealing with your past and what's happened in the past, I think that could be really, really difficult sometimes to. To, I guess use that the pro in the proper way moving forward. Yeah, it, it's 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 funny you started to link that that way because I I have kind of one other thing I wanted to relate to, but then that's that's definitely where I want to go on the agenda here is talking about how this links to future decisions and and so forth. An another thing that had come up here in the last couple of weeks, obviously you can see me sporting my Reds gear here tonight. The uh, Cincinnati Reds are starting to <laughs> you know, resemble a major league uh, baseball <laughs> franchise here in the last couple of weeks. And, and in all seriousness, what what's happened is there's been this youth movement there's been this call up and, and the, the one thing I'm really excited about and proud of the Reds is, is they've never been one to pull the trigger on their young talent. They're, they've usually waited more often than not and it's a unique situation because i'm sure you 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 want to try to win each and every night but they do have some young talent and they are looking for the future and they are looking to move ahead but there, but there's that saying in sports and i think it applies to life sometimes you don't pick the year the year picks you or you don't pick the situation to be successful you just prepare yourself to be a successful person. And then as the opportunity meets those things, that, that it, it takes place. I think that's true in the, in the job place and, and, and all sorts of leadership. But, but thinking of the Reds analogy that I'm talking about, don't you think there's something to be said in terms of not being afraid to fail and having the opportunity? I think that's part of where your feet are at. If, if you have a chance to be really, really good at something right now, what's wrong with going ahead and trying to be really, really good at it right now. Uh, right. Do, do you, do you think sometimes people can worry so much about, and I don't, I don't want to contradict myself here, but they, they worry so much about well, what's my job place going to be in five years or what's my financial state going to be in five years or, or are we going to do that home improvement in five years? Are we going to do that? You know, it, and it's one of those things, maybe, maybe it's a college student. Maybe, maybe it's making that thing. Should I go in a little bit more of debt now for that experience now or, or all right. of those different things? I guess, I guess the question and the whole reason I brought up the Reds is what, what's your response to if you have an opportunity to be great at something now, what's wrong with trying to go ahead and be great now? Yeah, I, I, I think that I, I, th I think there's a couple things I want to unpack with what you're saying there, Shane. I, one, I think there has to be, and I've always been a big believer in, and there has to be, you know, sort of a short term kind of plan or goals, however you want to say it, and then a long-term kind of thought process too 
of where you're wanting to get. And I think it's, I think most coaches, I think this is what, and I, I think that really good coaches understand the importance of, of having a plan. Okay. Just having a plan in place that involves now and involves down the road. I think the really good coaches understand the importance of a plan. Again, going back to my, to my, you know, again, I, I feel like I just mentioned Hank Haney, but we'll mention this again. You know, one of the things he talks about a lot on his podcast as a golf coach is, and, and in coaching in general is that it, he always says this, he always says goals without a plan, they're just dreams. All right. So if you just have goals and no plan, you just have a dream. And, and his thing is there has to be a plan in place. He tells a story and, and, and I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but I'm going to tell this story because I think it's interesting. And it kind of goes with what we're talking about. He tells a story of when he first began coaching his actual first, like sort of big time golfer that he coached was Mark O'Mara. All right. Some, some golf fans may remember Mark O'Mara. Mark O'Mara um, at the time was, was, was a struggling pro. He, his game was struggling, and a friend of his had asked Hank Haney, they happened to be at the same resort where Hank Haney was a teacher, okay, would you take a look at him, just just see what you think, watch his swing a little bit, see if you have any advice. So he went out, he stood behind this guy, was watching him swing a little bit. Mark O'Mara was frustrated, he's on the verge of losing his tour card at the time, and he turned to Hank Haney and was like, well, what do you see, you know? And Hank Haney said, well, why don't we go inside and, and grab something to drink and, and talk for a minute, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and I'll let you, I'll kind of fill you in on what I see. And, may, and Amara interrupts him. He's like, I, I don't have time for that. I'm getting ready to lose my car. I don't have time to go sit down and have a Diet Coke with you. He goes, I've got to, you know, I've got to hit balls. I've got to work. And Hank Haney said, well, you're putting in the work, but it's not, it may not be what you need to be doing. And, and you, know, you may not be working efficiently. And, and working correctly, he's like, why don't we take a minute to sit down and I'll, I'll tell you my plan. And they sat down and he put a plan in place for him based on the goals Mark O'Mara had, where he wanted to end up, right? Put a plan in place. And, and during the time that Hank Haney coached him, he won two majors. He ended up becoming a golf hall of famer. Okay. But my point to all that is as when you're a good coach, you have a plan in place. So to answer your question, Shane, like in the red situation, right? There's nothing wrong with trying to be successful right now. We've got this group of young players. We can put them in a situation and let them learn on the job, right? Kind of like kind of learn on the fly a little bit. They're going to have growing pains. They're going to make mistakes. But why do they have to learn in triple A? They can learn right here and help us some now. But, and this, and this I know you know as a Reds fan, for the first time in a long time, you actually see a long-term plan in place, right? You actually see a plan that says, oh, wait a minute. I kind of see what they're trying to do now. They've always told us they were doing this and you scratch your head and be like, what? Well, now you actually see a plan and kind of where they're going. Does that make sense to you? So, so like, so like mm -hmm. it, you, you, you've got the right now, the present, but you also have a plan long-term for what you want to get to and how, more importantly, not what you want to get to, but how you're going to get to there, right? How you're going to get there. That's what that, that plan means. That, that, that's good stuff. I, I, I have a question for you specifically, and I don't even know if it's a fair question or not. I think it's just an honest question. When, when, when you think most of our listeners know, you know, Matt, Matt, has been a crazy, crazy successful high school basketball coach for over two decades in terms of the Benton County basketball program. Never hadn't had a losing season in for forever. Um, and you and you made the move here to, to to come back closer to home and 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 take on a, a job that, if if I'm being honest, I think you'd agree is, is probably more difficult, right. <laughs> you know, more you know more responsibility and more different things throughout. I guess my question is. When, when you make a move like that, was there a fear of what you were leaving and a fear that, man, what if I go do this and it's the wrong decision and I messed up? <laughs> what if I go and leave this really, really good thing that means a lot to me and always will mean a lot to me? And, and I find out a year or two later, they're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's the wrong thing. I'm not saying that's happened. I'll say it like, you right. know, just in terms of how you feel. Uh, what, what, 
was there a, a fear? And do you think there's a fear of people when they've had a job for a long, long time? Because I, I think I've said on previous shows before, I'm probably not the most comfortable with change sometimes. I, you know, I've, I've had, um, I'm in my mid forties. I've had, I've worked at the same exact place for 20 plus years, been married to the same person coming up on 20 years, been, you know, lived in the same home for 20 years. There's a lot of same, right? Right. The change sometimes is good, but change sometimes is scary. Like what, was there a fear factor that you faced when you made such a, a difficult decision? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, that, there's definitely that. I think for me, what, uh, there was certainly a concern that I would miss coaching a great deal. And, and am I giving up something that, that, you know, is, you know, all of us have certain things that we, that we have a knack for, right. And, and not very many of us have a ton of those things. It's not like most of us have 10 different things we're good at, you know, a lot of times it's one or two things. And, and when you give one of those up there, there's a concern there. I think for me, what, what my deciding factor was ultimately was I knew even if I made what ended up being the wrong decision, I was doing it for the right reasons, you know? And mm, I think yeah, that's, yeah. you know, because I, I was doing it for my kids and being more a part of their life. And, and so I can, I could, I, I, you know, I was at a place where I could live with it. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed my new job and, and I really, really have a lot of respect for the people I work with and for. Okay. So it's worked out fine. Does that mean I don't miss coaching? Ah, you know, yeah, no, that doesn't mean that. I mean, sure. There's things I miss, but, but it's worked out. But for me again, and I think that's the thing I would go back to is if you're making a tough decision like that, what are the true reasons behind that decision? You know, and I think if they're the right yeah, reasons, absolutely. you can sort of live with the results. I, I would even, I wouldn't even go. And I guess this goes back to the quality quantity thing. You know, sometimes you can live so much in the now and become obsessed with it. And I think I probably have been there a couple of times in, in my career in certain jobs. Um, Maybe that's where burnout comes from too. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things right. where you are so present that it absolutely starts to consume you and you work so hard at it. You, you, I'm sure you've had examples of that either with yourself or with people that, uh, that you've coached with or been teaching with or have been involved in leadership somewhere. Do you think burnout can be related to that obsessed with the now? I, I uh, maybe a little bit. I think I, I honestly think burnout comes more from just lack of, you know, balance in your life because I've had situations. I, I, I don't know that I've ever experienced a total type of burnout when it came to my job or my coaching or anything like that. But I certainly at, at some points in my career towed a fine line between uh, hard work and obsessive work or, you know, um, and 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 not having that balance right that that i think is important like whether it be you know taking time to exercise and take care of yourself physically um taking time to to get to get away from from the sport you coach and just clear your mind mentally taking time to spend time with your family right and all those things i think to me you can be present and still do all those things. You understand what I'm saying? And so I don't know if it's just being in the moment causes burnout or, or allowing the moment to eat you up to the point where you don't, you don't do those other things. You don't have those, that, that work, um, that work life balance. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think the probably the final main thing in terms of the outline, and then we'll, we'll kind of review a couple of things. I wanted to look at it from the viewpoint of as a leader, and you know, you're leading a group of people. So sometimes that could be a coach leading young people. It could be an administrator leading a staff. Um, it could be a, a lead teacher leading a team of teachers. Um, well, whatever that may be, obviously in the business world, what, what are your responsibilities in terms of helping others stay in, in the present now? And, and, you know, I, I think so much about the hustle bustle, the busy schedules, and I think of staff meetings, or I think of coaches meetings, I think of the extra film session, I think of practice and then scouting report. I think of 
you know, whatever, whatever that may be in, in terms of the line of leadership you're in, I'm, I'm sure we all have those things. What, what do you feel like is the, you mentioned time management. That was one thing I'd written down in my notes. Uh, what, what are some things in terms of the leader's responsibility to help the people that they're leading stay where their feet are at in terms of, of living for the now? I think it goes right back to, to the example I used a few minutes ago telling the story about Hank Haney and Mark Amara. I think it comes down to what is the plan? Okay, what are our goals and what's the plan? You know, like, like, like for me, what, what I've always seen in education a lot or a lot I have in education and in some in sports, it's easy to make the goals. I mean, let's be real honest. The goals are kind of, hmm. you know, like, like if you ask a, a sports team, what's your goal? What's your goals this year? And goals, I don't even know. Uh, I, I would push back to, to Hank Haney's quote about the without a, uh, uh, a plan, your goals are just dreams. You could even replace the word goal with more like destination because a lot of times when people talk about goals, it's like where they actually want to end up, right? But, but, but let's, but when you put together your goals, uh, hey guys, what, what's your, well, we want to win the league. Um, you know, we want to, we want to make it to the district tournament. We want to, you know, the teams will come up with goals. If you ask a group of teachers, you know, to put together a list of goals, uh, they'll, they'll come up with goals. They'll have goals they want to accomplish within their classroom. You, you can have goals that meet the standards that you guys are working toward or whatever. The goals are easy. To me, I think what, what separates good coaches from great coaches or bad coaches, from good coaches, however you want to say it, administrators, coaches, whoever you want to lump in there, what separates those people are the, the ones who are able to put together a plan. Because again, the plan is what keeps it present, Shane, in my opinion, because when you look at your teachers or you look at your players and you say, okay, here's our goals and here's how we're going to get there, the here's how we're going to get there is the present right? It's the process. It's where your feet are. So it's like, here's what we got to do today to get to eventually what we, those goals we set for the future. And I think that's how people stay present. That would be my biggest advice for anybody leading would be, you know, the process, the plan you put in place is crucial to, to people staying present. You know, to, to me, that's, that's the big thing. Well, that's that's really good stuff. As as I move here, kind of into the my final thought, like like each time we do one of these shows, I always make different notes and different things. Because again, we don't do a whole lot of, of show prep. We always just kind of sit and talk. And you know, as I, I list set things, I think three different times here in my notes, I've I've mentioned something about plan, vision, goals, those types of words that you're talking about. And, and I do think that's a great balance of past present future uh, i i think that you know when you do have a vision I, I call them sometimes in coaching and you know a lot of times as a principal i don't know if i use the exact word but it's for a lack of a better term non-negotiables right we all right. we all have different ways you you want your players to be individuals you want your staff members to be individuals you want the different people you're working with to be individuals but but within a plan a lot of times, hey, here are the things I just, I absolutely believe in all the way to the end and back. And and I think sometimes there's non-negotiables. And I think what will happen is that's what will keep you locked in on making the proper present decision, if I follow what you're saying, right? Like, like as I offer, as I offer a final thought of a solution in terms of, of, of a leader, a takeaway from the show 51 here, it's if, if you have the vision and you have the goals and you have those non-negotiables in mind, it's going to lead the way you act, the way you talk, the way you go about your now, right? Where your feet are at. It's going to, and it's still going to have a futuristic plan in place. It's still going to be, I assume, based on your past experiences, right? Every time you go right. into a coaching situation or into a leadership situation, if you realize you're doing it or not, you're obviously using past experiences. You're, you've gained the knowledge somewhere along the line for you to decide, well, hey, this worked pretty well, or man, that was awful. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, right. That's past. So I think there's a lot more past, present, future involved, but I, but I think that foundation allows you 
to live in the present, live where your feet are at in the most powerful way. Is that an accurate way of summarizing the show? If you were wanting a leader to listen to the show and, and take something away to apply? Yeah, I, I think when, 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 when you first told me we were doing a show, Shane, and I guess this would be my final thought, but, but, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I knew where you were coming from. So, so, but, but there are times where I'll hear people say, live in the now, live in the moment. And I'll cringe a little bit because I'll think that's great, but let's make sure we're living there the right way. Right. It's kind of like what you just talked about, because there still has to be some learning, learning from past and there still has to be some planning for future. You know, it just can't be wake up every day and just, living the moment. I mean, there's got to be, <laughs> there has to be some give and take. So for me, like, like for me, I think, I think it's all about, we talked earlier about, if you remember when we were talking about the Denver nugget thing, we were talking about how your past can either eat you up, right. Or it can motivate you, right. How mm -hmm. you handle those past failures or past successes, either one, you know, kind of, kind of can lead to, to, to what you're doing right now. And I think the future's the same way in, in the sense that I think people look at the future two different ways, one being positive, one negative. If, if you use your future aspirations or say, like, for instance, say you're, say you're, you know, within your career, let's say that you, in your mind, say five, six, seven years down the road, I want to be in this job. I want to have this promotion. I want to be a principal. I want to be a superintendent. Uh, or let's say in coaching, I want to be a head coach. I want to be in this situation, uh, whatever. And if that motivates you to do your current job really, really well, right. And learn as much as you can learn and bring value to your position and really, really, really gain momentum within your career based on the fact that you're doing a great job, right then that future has motivated you. Your future plans or thoughts have motivated your present self to be great. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But if, if you're just sitting around, well, I'll put in my time right now, but in a few years, I'm going to jump over and do this. You know, see, there's a different attitude there. Now it's just, it's like that player in sports that has that big contract, right? And then they're not motivated anymore or whatever versus that player that's, that's, working toward something. Um, and I, I, I think that sometimes people in the workplace, especially, well, I don't really like my job, uh, but it's okay. I'll jump to another one. And then they get to that. I don't really like that one. I'll mm -hmm. jump to another one. There's a difference between just jumping around and actually working toward a promotion, you know, working toward bettering yourself. I don't think there's anything wrong with having playing like having aspirations to 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 move up in the mm. world i to me if you're a good leader the people you're leading you have no problem with them wanting that because those people probably you know if you're a head coach and you've got five assistant coaches and they all want to be head coaches someday to me that's a good thing because they're going to work really really hard to learn from you and to be better coaches so that they can move up and be a head coach i have no problem with that and i think i think most good leaders don't have a problem with that. Um, but I think, again, how do you learn from your past, right? How do you plan for your future with being where your feet are right now and doing what you're supposed to be doing right now? That's, that's the trick. That's good stuff. I, I've, I've really enjoyed the show. I, th I think it's a good start to our new season here. Good takeaway. Um, you know, next week we'll be talking about, uh, you know, don't forget about me in terms of a little off season stuff in terms of as you come into summer break as an educator, uh, off season as coaches or leaders of, of different things. Uh, I think I think there's some things we'll be able to tie into this as well. But uh, look forward to a great season again. Check us out on YouTube um, if you're not getting a chance to watch us. Uh, or wherever you get your podcast out there on just about any app, um, expanding the zone, Shane Holmes and Matt Holmes, uh, look us up and uh, we try to come at you each week with a good leadership topic where we tie some, some uh, current sports and some different things to it. So, so Matt, on that note, we'll go ahead and call uh, show 51 uh, a success here and, and look forward to getting together next week and, and, and doing it again. So again, thanks Dr. Chris Good for all the support. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel there so you never miss us. And uh, we'll see you next week on Expanding Design. Thanks, everyone.